What can grownups do to help young adults like you as you guys take a stand for what you believe? Man, invest in us. That That's the first word that comes to mind is really invest in the youth around you. I, I mean, I have probably three or four mentors, you know, my father, my grandfather, and then a couple really close friends. And, you know, they're obviously all older than me, but they took the time to invest in me and really develop my passion. Because, you know, I, I've been passionate about a lot of things for a lot of time, but for most of that time, it was pretty surface level and, you know, maybe a little bit not directionless, but I wasn't really knowing where to go. And having these older people with more wisdom than I, you know, more, or they know more than me really guiding me through every step of the way, you know, showing me where I need to go or, you know, what I need to, what I need help with, what just guidance, really guidance, these people investing in me. So I would really say, take the time to invest in these kids around you because they are your future. You're not going to be around here forever. And, you know, I'm, I'm the next generation. So invest in us. Hey, let me follow up with that. So this is a mentoring question. I often get does the mentor ask you and invite you to be mentored or do you approach the mentor and ask them for mentorship? What do you say? That's a good question. I really feel like it depends on the situation because for me, I was the one asking for help. And I know not every kid is like that because some kids might be like, I know more than you. I don't need you. But in reality, no, we we really do need y'all. I mean, I I had no idea where I was going. I mean, I need I need direction. Y'all have more wisdom than me. Y'all know more. Y'all know more than me. But it really it really depends on the situation. I mean, for me, I approach them. But for maybe a kid who doesn't, um, I don't want to use the word humility, but doesn't have as much humility as me. It, you know, and start approaching them, you know, get involved in their life. You know, if they play sports, show up to their, um, show up to their games, really cheer them on, just, you know, start developing that relationship with them and slowly get more and more involved in their life and invest in them and really guide them to truth. That's good. So for everyone listening, when I'm looking for someone I'm going to invest in, cause I'll tell you, uh, grownups don't grownups who are, who you would want to invest in you don't have a lot of margin for investing. So it's not like you're going to take on a hundred youth, right? So I look for people who are faithful, accountable, and teachable, because those are the three things that I can't pass on. So I'm looking for those kind of qualities, but I'll tell you it's awkward either way, right? It's awkward to walk up to someone and say, Hey, will you mentor me? And then like, where does conversation go from there? And I'll, the, the answer is the conversation is, what do you want mentorship on and how often or how serious of a commitment is this? Like, are we meeting three times a year or three times a week is kind of the, what you need to be prepared for. And then on the flip side, I would just encourage and exhort all people who are just a couple steps ahead. So anything that you can pass on to someone else that you would go and say, I'm, I'm willing to be available. So you don't want to be presumptuous. It does sound presumptuous. Like, Josiah, uh, can I mentor you? It just nope. <laughs> sounds a little bit presumptuous, which is probably a large part of the reason why people a couple of steps ahead don't do it. They don't want to presume and then it'd be awkward. And the person be like, I'm not really interested, but to just say, Hey, I'm available. If you've got any questions, if there's anything I can offer any support I can give, I'm available for you. If you need it, happy to talk about that. Is this kind of a gentle way to make yourself available for people who are faithful, accountable, and teachable? But let me pass the ball over to you, Sarah. Uh, what would you say adults could do to help mentor or help encourage and um, support young adults of tomorrow? You know, I think the biggest thing is advocating for youth voices and encouraging them. So you know, at the end of the day, we're talking about all these mentors, our families, you know, teachers, those are the adults that kids are coming to with their grievances that they're like, well, something doesn't sit right, or I really don't like how this is run. And it's up to the adults to encourage them and to tell them, you can talk about these things, you can find solutions to these things, you don't just have to sit in a bad situation, you can solve it. So it does go back to that power of adults just encouraging their youth. Mm, I like that. It reminds me of 
uh, specific experience you had that was on public display for everybody where you were literally told you were not allowed to speak because you were bringing up a challenge and a question that was totally legitimate, but because you were questioning the adults, uh, the older people in the room, then you were no longer allowed to speak. And in fact, what would have been really empowering is if you were allowed to speak and the issue had just been resolved and addressed. I think that that's a really good point. So I think an encouragement for everyone who's a little bit further along the road is sometimes the young adults are going to do and say things that are hard to hear or that we don't like, and we have to be emotionally healthy enough to handle that. And what I would also say is sometimes young adults will do things that are not right. And if we can have a little bit of grace for that, to remember that when we were young adults, we did things that were a little bit not right too. I mean, I know I did. <laughs> I see you smiling. And those are actually really good moments to pull people aside and give them some feedback instead of assuming that they are as experienced and have had all of the life experiences of a 40 year old and therefore they should know better. And that was stupid or arrogant or whatever judgments you would conclude. They're actually trying to engage in uh, the workplace or political advocacy life or whatever it is, but they only have the experience of someone who like not that long ago was just in high school. And so like you're saying, Sarah, to validate, you can do this, this is the road. And then to privately encourage and correct them to say, you'll be more effective if, or this would have been a better approach so that we can help guide them along being more effective in their leadership is probably the best approach. And that's how we can build a bench of leaders for tomorrow who are really effective. All right, let's kick it over to you, Landon. What would you say, what can adults do to help our young adults? So one of the things that I really hate is whenever adults say, I sure would hate to be born in this generation. Esther mm -hmm. says, for such a time as this, and I believe that we were born here in a specific time to do great things. Adults could encourage us by, number one, encouraging us to believe why we believe it. So this goes back to having a strong foundations. So whenever this happens, after one conversation of someone with an opposing viewpoint, you're not left thinking, thinking, why do I believe this? Or is everything I've been told a lie? No. I also encourage adults to play the devil's advocate. This gives kids and the younger generation an opportunity to think for themselves. 